Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler from QRadar here. I wanted to take a minute and I wanted to talk about fault tolerance, failover, and high availability. It is worthy of note, this is a replacement for a video I did earlier this year that there was an error in, okay? So anything you see here that contradicts something that maybe you watched a couple of months ago, this is a corrected version of that data. But getting right down to it, what is the problem? Okay, so we have QRadar event and flow processors, and we have consoles, and sometimes they are combined in one, and sometimes they're broken up into many, many units. Um, but I can lose a data a console, which means I lose access to my data while we're figuring out why a machine went wrong. I can lose an event or a flow processor, which means we could lose the data itself and all the recordings if we've lost, you know, a machine's caught fire or something similar to that. Or we can lose a data center to say that maybe you've got um, two dozen branch locations where you're collecting all of your log events and suddenly we've lost power to your data center. These are some of the problems we face and why we want things like fault tolerance and failover. But getting right into it. Um, to start with, I want to talk about the appliance itself. The current top line of QRadar appliances is what's called a 29 series, an XX29, right? And this has a RAID 10, so there's two redundant drives and two 900 watt power supplies. What this means is you would need to lose three physical drives before you lost data. You would also need to lose both power supplies before you lost functionality. Uh, either way, these machines should scream at you when they start looting hardware. This is not a full fault tolerance or failover, but it is something that makes this system quite a bit beefier, that they are very well-designed boxes. But when we look at the high availability case itself, right, going back to our earlier example of uh, one event and flow processor in one console, we can go through and we can set an identical piece of hardware right next to it in the shelf, right? Probably on the next rack over and something that's attached to a different circuit and perhaps a different switch, but they're functionally identical and they're one to two milliseconds apart. They're very, very tightly together for latency. Um, this way, if I lose that console, what's going to happen is it's going to immediately pick up from the other side and there will be no loss of fidelity. Uh, there might be one or two log events dropped, but you're not going to see a lot. It will be a very tight, nearly identical circumstance. And the same is true if I lose the event or flow processor. So if that goes down, every record is duplicated in near, near real-time continuous action so that even someone using the system is not going to watch it, is not going to see a failure happen. There might be a blip, they'll have to log back into a console, but that's it. This is, um, this is perhaps the best way to do this. If money were no object, we would all use HA, right? And there is no separate licensing for events in HA. Okay, this is different than DR in this, right? So if you have licensing for the top box in your HA, you have licensing for your bottom box. Uh, disaster recovery is a slightly different scenario, right? This tends to imply rather than I've lost a box, I've had a hurricane or a flood or one of these things where I've lost a data center, right? So if I have a data, a second data center um, off in the distance, right? Maybe you got one in Dallas, one in Houston, or one in Lenexa and one in um, Memphis. That's fine. I take a QRadar console and I take my event or flow processor and I set them up um, pretty well the same way that they are set up at the primary data center. And I have um, replication going on, oh, four or five times a day, something like that. And this is a bit of a manual process. This does require some scripting, but it's not a, um, a terrible thing to do, right? It's a small amount of work. So if I lose data center one, right, we have that, uh, that blackout incident. We have the dark fibers gone that um, data center two will pick up all of the functionality from data center one and not every record is going to be fully up to date because this is updating oh a couple of times a day so there will be a gap in your data until you can recreate the connection between them and reconcile the databases even in a case where uh, like hurricane katrina where the primary data center is just gone all of a sudden or maybe you're three months getting back up and running something very long term this will continue to run indefinitely from that data center too until you can get data center one back up and running so less complete but more robust than the ha scenario right and to kind of uh, take this one a little farther forward we can say a disaster recovery scenario same basic idea we talked about before right i have data center one and two but in this case um i just lose an event or a flow processor Okay, that, uh, you know, something goes bad in the hardware, uh, you know, a rack comes away from the wall, something terrible. 
the QRadar event or flow processor at the DR site can pick up the functionality and attach to this QRadar console in the primary data center. Now, I warn you about the use on this. This is a relatively heavy use of WAN resources. And the only time I really recommend this particular scenario is where all assets are remote. For example, I have customers in banking that everybody is far away from their event processor because they're all branch banks all over the state. In a case like this, that's gonna run beautifully. Okay, but there's cases where all of the data sources are close by where it's not. So this one's kind of an edge case. I just felt it was worth mentioning. Okay, and in a similar scenario, if I lose my QRadar console at Data Center 1, um, I can go and I can, um, basically, this is something else, like I said, you have to script, so it's not trivial to set up, it, it, but it's um, not terrible either. And I can tell that event or flow processor to start talking to my QRadar console at the DR site. Okay, and this is a, a more reasonable user performance, and we see this one a little more often because this isn't live high-speed feeds and data. This is just the summary and event data going up to that console so we can manage it from there without doing a full failover of the data center. And here's one of the things that, um, this is one of the things we had to correct for this particular presentation, that the secondary data center, this disaster recovery, has to have equivalent event and flow licenses on both sides. Right? And, and there's a few odd and end, uh, caveats with that. It's not true. But if I'm doing 10,000 events per second in Data Center 1 um, and I want to fail that over to Data Center 2, I will need 10,000 events per second over there. Right, So it, it needs to be licensed identically. The one exception to that, and we've seen a few cases of this over the years, is where Data Center 1 is a big generator of log event that you have your firewalls and your proxies and all of this. So what say... 50 or 80% of your log data is generated in data center one, you now know the power is down and you don't want to lose all of your uh, wellheads or branch banks or satellite locations. You still want to collect for them while you're getting data center one up and running. There is an odd edge case and we do this every once in a while where you have a smaller portioned uh, data center two, right? A smaller uh, number of events per second because you know the data center one events won't be forwarded here. But like I said, that's a bit of an oddball. Okay, redundant availability. This is one of the new use cases we're seeing. And this one is up and coming in popularity where I will have an event and flow processor, um, a pair of them, right? They might be uh, in the same facility. They might be in the same city, but both close enough by that we're gonna be able to grab the vast volume of log data. And I will have the log sources that will send to both identically. So what's going to happen here is um, if I lose uh, my event processor one or my flow processor uh, one, it's going to be no break in service because all data is going equally to both of them all the time. So if I lose EP1, that your QRadar console is going to immediately connect to the second one, probably going to have to re-log in, but nothing more exciting than that. It essentially gives you a DR type functionality with real time availability. And this one's up and coming in popularity. I mean, there's some network questions you need to ask first before you go this route, but this is definitely one of the things that we're seeing. Uh, last case I want to talk about is virtualization. Like everybody else, I love virtualization. We can take a QRadar console instance and an event or flow processor instance and put them in VMware, right? And they just go, and this is great. Using virtualization for QRadar is more, not less expensive than running it on bare hardware. When I say the hardware specs, and this is for one of my 29 series hardware, we use the heck out of these. Um, so this many CPUs or this kind of drive space, it, it's we're really using 100% of that IOPS. So if we put this in virtualization, and we absolutely can, it is just going to be more expensive than bare metal because essentially your VMware is overhead at that point. Now, the upside to this, of course, is that you get all these wonderful things like uh, vMotion. So if I have a second data center, right, I can just vMotion all of my instances over. So if I lose data center one, all these virtual machines will just completely migrate and you can't tell the difference from a user perspective. Once again, you're likely to have to log back into a console because of a certificate issue, but really that's all. This is the most convenient possible way to do your QRadar failover, but it is without question the most expensive. I am Mike Winkler, and this has been QRadar talking about fault tolerance, failover, and high availability.